This year, the wonderful city and province of Wellington has been blessed with beautiful, beautiful weather. Now that I'm back from holidays and settling back into the uh, new year, I took an opportunity to have a little look around Wellington and I've started looking at some of the things that you can do even when you're back at work in early January and February. And one in particular is the program which is presented by the Wellington Regional Council. Go to their website, which is www.gw.com govt.nz and in there there's a number of events uh, one of them is an annual cycle ride from Burdensgate all the way around to Pencaro. Uh that one went on a couple of weekends ago and I really enjoyed that it was incredible because the weather was so still there was no wind at all which is almost impossible for around there you always expect a little bit of wind um, I took my recorder along and I recorded some of the events along the way. We stopped a couple of times and we had a look at the lighthouse and the wreck and some of the local landscape and one of the regional park rangers gave talks on various aspects and fauna and uh, sites along the way. And, well, I decided to take my recorder along to get a feel and give you a bit of an oral image as to what the event's like. Here we are, we're setting off from Burns Gate. It's a beautiful sunny day, around about 10 o'clock in the morning. We're surrounded by families, we're surrounded by uh, cyclists, and it's just beautiful. Block area, which is 470 hectares of East Harbour Regional Park. So this is a public area with mountain bike tracks in there, walking tracks. So if you come down here by yourselves, you can head in and go for a mountain bike. Uh, we'll head around the front of the two lakes and you'll see them on our left. And then we'll uh, go for a gate onto private property. Uh, and we'll stop beside a shipwreck and that's where we'll be having our lunch. So behind me is the operational lighthouse. So this is um, Pinkaro Lighthouse that operates through here. Uh, this was built in 1908. The top one, what we saw as we were biking down, if you looked up, it was strictly above us, uh, was built in 18, uh, well, 1850s, 1858. Uh, and that was to service this area to stop shipwrecks basically and mark the harbour entrance uh, and give a lighting site that was operational by the Bennett family. Uh, and the husband actually drowned just out here and Mrs. Bennett looked after the lighthouse by herself and uh, raised, I think, four children uh, there and she maintained the lighthouse. So it's pretty well known that she was the first uh, female lighthouse keeper uh, in New Zealand and she did that for quite a long time before heading back to England. Um, so just for some of them I already answered, but why could anyone think of the reason why they would move a lighthouse from a nice high vantage point to down here? Yes? You're exactly right, because of the fog. The fog rolls in, that one's too high above the fog and ships below the fog will not see it from here. Uh, the fog is quite above the sea, they'll actually quite see it quite easily. So it was fog why they put this one in right down low. Uh, after these were built, that one was built in the 1930s, a Bering Head Lighthouse. So if you look out, you'll see some pines there, and right up the front, you'll see the white object uh, that's the other lighthouse. So even after this was marking in here, if you notice, until you get right the way around the corner, or around the corner there, you won't see this lighthouse. Um, so putting one right out on the point there, actually mark uh, this uh, interest and um, this harbour. Uh, we've had about even six seas, about 22 shipwrecks along this coast, so it is quite a treacherous coastline. Um, and please help out. Uh, also, you'll see a couple of signs on our right as we bike around. Uh, this is a doctoral breeding area. Uh, so we have banded doctorals in here and the next bar around, and also at Bearing Head. Um, about four years ago, we started to, there's about 40 pairs, we started looking at them. and. Uh, started to monitor them and they weren't having much success uh, and we thought if we monitor the nest we'll be able to see what's going on but one day the nest would be there the next day there'd be no signs and no evidence of what was going on we might be able to see if people walked on them if there was 
So I'm eating them with these, some footprints or some debris here. Uh, so after the first sort of year and a half, we ended up putting cameras on them. And could anyone pick up what was the main problem? Oh, yes, not you guys have been here before. Uh, there was a predator. Can anyone think what the main predator of these little nests? No, you guys have been here. Oh, yes. No, we know that answer. No, not possums. Anyone else? I would say, what about an SCOAT? No, not stoats. Dogs. Sorry? Dogs. No. Seals. No, uh, it was 80%. These guys will tell you. Hedgehogs. So 80% of our nest that we were uh, recorded, what were being destroyed, were by hedgehogs. So they come in, the odd cat would come in and clean up after them, uh, and sometimes the cats would uh, destroy them, uh, all public, because uh, basically uh, just that's your nest, and they'll lay three gravelly covered, coloured eggs right there, and you would never notice. And we had one red, probably about five metres that, that way, just to the end of the track. Um, and so we'll cordon off this area. Uh, we were having just over a 2% success rate uh, when they were, we were monitoring. So we put in, uh, you'll see a waratah yeah. here. There'll be a trap in behind it to trap uh, hedgehogs and stoats, and ferrets and weasels and rats. Uh, last monitor, well, last year we increased the breeding to about 32%. Uh, which is inside their natural range of somewhere between 30 and 70 percent. All depends on the weather. So if you suddenly come in here, big strong one, oh my eggs, oh my birds, they just leave it and go. So that uh, can affect the season. So we're getting them up into their natural range. Uh, the local uh, Iwi put a rahui on this land. Most people would know rahuis from uh, shellfish and shell beds. Uh, that means a no go, don't collect, uh, don't disturb. Uh, the local Kiwi to protect the bird in this area. They put a rahui, uh, every rahui on the breeding site, so we don't want people walking through there uh, or entering the area while they're breeding. They've stopped breeding now, but we might see the odd little adults still around before heading back. They migrate, and they can migrate anywhere, uh, all over the place. From New Zealand, they go to everywhere along the trail. There are actually all these uh, stoke rabbits and hedgehog traps, uh, uh, this is uh, hedgehogs are actually trail quite, uh, around uh, quite a predator and just beyond and that, they use a lot of going small about baby eggs, put some of the nesting birds on the coastline yeah. um, so they have special traps here. for them we're about to head up a rather large kids. hill now which is the only one on it, and the smaller bike's quite steep up, up one side of the hill and meet back on the Wainui Road where most will catch us there's no wind here a slight breeze there but nothing like what you would expect from Wellington anyway it's been quite cool, the uh, Wellington Regional Council Rangers, we have three of them with us. Uh, one's riding in the head, one's riding in the middle. And we have a truck at the back, which is uh, just trailing along, just to make sure to pick up any stragglers or anybody who has any injuries. Not that they are a great deal. One or two kids slide over here and there, but nothing that they can't handle. The width appearance, stunning weather. I'm almost being drowned out by the crickets, which is quite cool. Everywhere along the trail, there are actually all these uh, stoat, rabbit, and hedgehog traps. Uh, we were told earlier that hedgehogs are actually quite uh, quite a predator, and they um, they eat a lot of the small baby eggs of some of the nesting birds on the coastline here. So they have special traps for them. We're about to head up a rather large hill now, which is the only one on it. Apparently, it's quite steep up one side and down the other, and meet back on the Wainui Road where the bus will catch us. Whew, that was fun. Hang up the hill there, must have been about a 3k climb. First bit didn't quite go so well for me, uh, I lost traction and I had to walk the first little bit, probably in the wrong gear. However, got to the top, puffing, a real good workout, that's for sure. And now it's down the other side, which is uh, fairly steep, not undulating at all. Back on the bus now, I'll show you the video over here.
switch plus button to lock. Door lock. Your maximum use time is 10 minutes. Press button to unlock door. no trip would be complete without a visit to the wonderful new toilets electronic automatic toilets at Burdens Gate which is at the very end of Eastbourne where our trip started and finished well thanks very much to the Wellington Regional Council for a brilliant day out if you'd like to know more about some of their trips I suggest you go to their website www.gov.gov.nz and have a look at the program that's up there uh, that particular event, I should point out, was actually something you needed to book ahead because they had a bus which brought us from Eastbourne, as you heard there, all the way back to Burns Gate. Uh, we could have cycled, I guess. There'd be another two-hour trip, I guess, because it's a fairly long way. Um, thanks again to the park rangers who helped us out and to everybody involved. Well, that's it from me at the moment, but I'm going to leave you with uh, a quirky little song I found on the interweb the other day. This one is called uh, On Your Bike, and it's by Frankie and the Flames. <laughs>